Lauren, how's it going? Going great. Thanks for having me, Matt. Great to see you. Thanks for joining. So where are you where are you tuning in from here? I'm tuning in from the North Point offices. Okay, in Atlanta, right? In Atlanta, yeah. Awesome. That's great. So tell us just a little bit about North Point Worship and how you became a part of it. Sure. Um, so North Point Worship actually started as North Point Inside Out, um, which was named after our youth group here um, at North Point Ministries. Um, a group of people just started writing songs um, specifically for our youth group and events that we would put on for um, the kids at our local churches. And um, things began to shift a little bit when we wrote Death Was Arrested. Um, and it kind of became clear that uh, we wanted to write songs for the church as a whole, not just for um, the youth at our church. So we changed the name to North Point Worship and have really just been focusing wholeheartedly on um, writing language for the people at our church, whether it be, you know, teenagers to middle, middle aged people to, to yeah. elderly people, um, where, wherever you are in your journey, um, giving people language to uh, figure out how God views them. And um, yeah. yeah, if it goes, if it goes past our local church, that's great. But that's been our heartbeat. Um, so we changed the name to North Point Worship. I think two years ago, and I actually have only just been a part of North Point Worship for three years. Um, I moved here three years ago. I was a worship director at a church in Wisconsin, um, so far away. Um, and I, on the side, was writing for the label that North Point Worship was on. And so they had me come in and write with their artists. And I met some of the people that are in the band. And they were like, why do you live in Wisconsin? And I was like, I don't know. So I moved yep. to Atlanta to be a part of um, North Point Worship, and I've just been, I have just yep. been so blessed to be a part of it. What, what a great church, here. what a great, yeah, what a great church, what a great worship ministry. I remember when I first started leading worship a long time ago, so like in the early 2000s, I remember tuning in, I think it was on a Wednesday night to watch 722. Oh, yeah. And uh, they were the only ones at that time doing online worship. Like, believe it or not, they were literally the only ones streaming worship online. I mean, these were very different days. Yeah. Uh, the internet was a different place then, but they were the only one doing it. And worship leaders yeah. were tuning in to watch, I think it was like Steve Fee. Uh, oh, sure. Who had Todd Fields. Yep. Uh, lead worship. And it was just, it was awesome. I remember too, I mean, Death Was Arrested was a huge song, but then even before that, no one hired. Do you guys even do that song anymore? Of course, yeah. Like, that's like an our epic song. <laughs> that is such yeah. an epic song. I remember playing that at different youth camps and it just always went well. Yeah, I, I so. feel really lucky to be a part of a community that is like always looking for new ways to um, invest in the local community. And then, like how you said, we'd had online services at like a cutting edge time, like trying yeah. to invest in people outside of our church too. Um, I feel really lucky to be here. You guys were doing it before it was cool, before it was even a thing to do. <laughs> Honestly, I think you before people even knew you could do it. That's what's sure. really bizarre. It was yeah. it was you guys, and then like <laughs> later the Cincinnati Vineyard started doing it, oh, and true. then and then five years later, every church in the world started catching up. But yeah, you guys were way way ahead. So last month, uh, North Point Worship released your latest album, "Our God Will See Us Through." Can you tell us a little bit about the album and how it came to be? Yeah, of course. So, I mean, even you talked about the history of worship at our church and um, it's definitely gone through multiple iterations, which I think is healthy as we discover new ways to, um, to draw people in. <clears throat> um, but I think we had reached a point where, um, you know, death was arrested kind of didn't throw us for a loop, but it was like unexpectedly well received. And so I think it just kind of we were felt like we were playing catch up. Like, how do we how do we become this, you know, mm -hmm. all encompassing thing, not just a youth situation. And so um, we had a season where we were really kind of just trying to figure out what God had specifically called us to. And there were new people being added to the group, myself included. And um, so in January of 2021, we actually went away and um, had a like a beach writing retreat where we just were able to uh, invest in community with each other and be honest. Yeah. And um, there was even like, 
I mean, if I can be candid, like repentance between each other and just getting really real and praying and asking God what the next season might look like for um, North Point worship. And I think we all landed on um, just really this stark belief that we didn't want to record or even write anything until it was going to be real. And God met us at that retreat um, in a way that I think I'm still processing even a year later. And we started writing these songs that were full of um, vulnerability and saying things that, you know, previously we would have been, I guess, afraid to say, and not because of our community or our church, but just sometimes the pressure that you feel as a worship leader to put on a mm. front. And um, yeah, I mean, God just kept giving us songs and more songs and more songs. And that's really what this whole album journey has been for us is just a growth in accountability and vulnerability with each other. And I think that you see those qualities in the songs that came out of the season. And we, we felt like people have connected to them in a different way as well. Like we're talking about really real stuff and people are um, connecting to it in a really deeply profound way. So it's been, it's been quite the journey for us. Mm, that's awesome. So as a writer and a worship leader with North Point, is there a song that means a lot to you personally? That's your favorite? Definitely. Um, the song Deliverer, um, which was our first single off the album. Um, it means a lot to me personally uh, because it came from a really, like I said, real place for me. Um, at that writing retreat, uh, there was a songwriting session between uh, myself and a guy named Clay Finnison and a guy named Desi Rains, who are on our team. And um, yeah, we just decided to be real about what was going on in our lives. And um, we were friends, so they kind of knew what was going on, but um, I had the opportunity to share with them some struggles I was going with because I had just gone through a divorce when we went to the beach. And that's kind of a taboo thing to talk about in church and um, to be real about. But I was just really struggling at that time. And um, I had a two year old daughter. So I was I was really struggling with how to be a good parent in the midst of grief and how to be a good leader when I was struggling with something, especially something that um, can be seen really negatively in a church context. Um, mm -hmm. And Clay shared about like some family trauma that he was going through that was causing anxiety in his life. And Desi shared about a decision he made that was causing really deep shame that he was walking through. And so we just started talking about these really intense, deep things that we were afraid to um, previously. Mm -hmm and all landed on the fact that we felt like God in each of our situations was our deliverer and he was seeing us through each step of the way and what did it mean to look um, to him for deliverance and what does deliverance even mean and so that's what the song uh, became was really an anthem for us as we were walking through um, our personal struggles and honestly when we, when we wrote the song I didn't even know if it would get on the album because we were saying things like depression and anxiety and um, darkest thoughts and addiction, you know. Um, but I'm just really grateful that our team got behind that and we were able to put a song on on the album that I think talks about things that people feel ashamed to talk about in church. And we've seen the um, we've seen the benefit of talking about that within the four walls of the church because people feel seen. And, um, yeah, I cry pretty much every time we lead it just cause it's still, it's still a truth that I need in my life. Um, mm -hmm. so yeah, deliver is definitely, I, I feel like it's a once in a, in a lifetime type of right where we needed a song and God gave us a song. I love that story of the songwriting on the beach, because I think that the overlying theme there of what made that special, what made it rich was vulnerability. Of just being very real, being very honest with each other. And I believe that that's really what our teams and our worship volunteers are craving. They're wanting to be a part of community that where there is something deeper in the conversation. We've all been to coffee with someone or maybe at a dinner 
where the conversation maybe just stays completely surface level almost the mm -hmm. whole time. And I think everybody in that conversation is kind of wishing that it would go deeper, but maybe we don't know how to go deeper because you might feel awkward or uncomfortable to ask the hard questions or to maybe even share something that's personal. But vulnerability is where the richness is. Like when you're at a dinner or at a coffee with someone and you finally get past the surface level stuff and start really talking about real things, real struggles, real issues, that's where the relationship is built. That's where the intimacy is built. And vulnerability is something that builds community. Community is built out of vulnerability. And, but there has to be a safe place to do that. Mm -hmm. A lot of people who are watching this, they're all worship leaders. Most of our of Loop community is worship leaders. How would you say that worship leaders could seek out community, or maybe even we swap that word with vulnerability mm -hmm. in their worship teams to get through hard seasons? Because people are going through hard things. And how can you actually meet people where they're at? You know, because you never know what someone on your team is going through. Maybe it's a divorce. Maybe it's a huge fight with someone or a job or financial struggle. So how, yeah. do you have any tips on how worship leaders can seek that out? Well, I think, I think it, it starts with us, like as, as a leader, um, removing the stigma that um, in order to be a leader, you have to be perfect. And I think, I think that's a difficult and treacherous road to kind of walk because obviously um, there's scripture behind leadership being held to a higher standard. And I think a lot of times people, um, whether you're on staff or you're just on a stage, you feel the pressure to present yourself in a certain way. Um, but I'm, I'm personally learning that um, our brokenness doesn't disqualify us. I think our brokenness is just another facet within which God's glory can shine. Um, we're all complex human beings who have doubts and fears and worries. And I think to kind of I don't know, sugarcoat everything almost removes a part of the story God wants to tell, which is that his heart is for redemption. So I think the the part the part where it starts is with us and realizing like we have to lead out in vulnerability. Like we can't expect our team to just feel safe to mm -hmm. come and be like, here's this giant thing. Yeah. Um so I think start with yourself and and saying, hey, I'm I'm, I might be the leader of this thing, but I'm going through a really tough time. And I want you to know that if you are as well, like you can always come to me. Um, yeah. yeah, I think I think it just starts with us taking that first step. Leading from example goes a long, long way. And I think if you're the first yeah. person in the group who's willing to share maybe something more vulnerable, it really encourages everyone else to be able to open up. It feels like a safe space. And somebody yeah. has to go first. And I guess that's kind of the part right. of being a leader. And that kind of has, right. that's the part of being a leader is the leader <laughs> goes first in a lot of these things. And right. that's kind of the role. Um, yeah. But it's amazing what people, you can unlock by doing that. Yeah. And I think, I think people, especially after, I mean, I don't want to always blame things on COVID or, but that was a really traumatic time for so many people. And I think it revealed a lot. And one thing, that I believe it revealed is that people are far less impressed with perfection and mm -hmm. are far more, um, are far more willing to follow somebody that they can relate to. Mm -hmm. Um, I just, I don't know. I'm not convinced that people are looking for someone to follow. Who's the best at every single thing. I think they're yeah. like, who's somebody that I can trust. And if you, if you portray yourself as being exempt from life's trials, um, yeah. That's just, yeah. I don't know, it's, it's not relatable, so. Yep. Who's real, who's relatable? I love that, that's that's huge. Yeah. So how can you build the community better with your worship team? Do you have any tips on, if you're a worship leader leading a group of volunteers or band members, how can you help build that community? Sure, I mean, um, I definitely don't have all the answers. I can tell you what I think we could get better at and what we're trying to get better at. Um, we see each other a lot, whether it's for rights or for Sunday morning or, you know, we're traveling or whatever the case may be. And I think it's easy sometimes to lean on that for our opportunity for community. But the truth of the matter is we're working on something. And so it's, that's not the prime time to be sharing, you know, these, these vulnerable 
yeah, whatever situations. So I think we're really trying to grow in creating time um, consistently where we're together outside of work. Um, we started this thing called Sabbath where we get together and we make a meal. And if we talk about a passage of scripture, great. If we just talk about life, great. But at least we're together and we're, we're able to, um, you know, check in and stuff like that. So I think that that leaning into those outside of church, outside of, you know, Mm -hmm. rehearsal, uh, community building opportunities is a great way to create that vulnerability when you are on stage because you've already been vulnerable off of it. Yeah. Time is so important because you're right. There's a time and place. Like maybe when you're setting up at 730 in the morning on the stage, (laughs) everybody's getting ready to sound check. (laughs) That's not the best time to be sharing about, you know, that your right. car was just impounded. Your darkest secrets, yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, right. So, but it's developing the time and space for those conversations, whether that's, right. you know, just huddling together, you know, after service or maybe earlier and earlier before service or um, midweek or maybe getting a beach house like you guys right. did, went to the, went to the beach. Um, you don't have to go that that far, but like I think it's just building the time to be together, to have a relationship right. where you're not just working, not just playing right. together, but you actually know each other. Right. And the best friendships, the best community does come from just time. And that's yeah. the hard thing is like, I think the hard thing is people have our time just carving the time out. But once yeah. you do, you find those rich relationships. Yeah. And I, I realize that, that we're in a different scenario because, you know, our team, this is what we do for a living and a lot of so we have more more time to uh find you know outside mm-hmm. of rehearsal time but even when i was like a worship director at a church that was all volunteer besides my staff position um we would have you know whether it be once a month you know game mm-hmm. nights or even if it's you know every three yeah. months or something just like like creating intentional time for people to actually be friends and get yeah. to know each other and be be a community um yeah i just think that 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 goes far beyond what we could imagine on stage when there's trust there i just i think we're better leaders together we're more united do you have any encouragement for worship leaders who might be struggling right now i think it just goes back to what to what I was saying earlier and just that, you know, this has been, this has been a difficult season for everyone. And it can feel, I think sometimes like, especially with um, like Christian celebrity culture and I don't know, just, it can feel like you're the only one struggling or you're the only one going through your particular Mm -hmm. difficulty, whether that be finding enough people to volunteer or you're going through something personally Um, so I guess, I don't know if it's encouragement as much as just like a reminder that you're not alone and that big churches and small churches, like we're all the same. We're dealing with human beings (laughs) um, who really need Jesus and that's really tough. And, um, yeah, I just, I think just the reminder that, um, yeah, whatever you're going through, someone else is going through too. And, um, yeah, maybe even making making a, a priority to find other worship pastors or worship leaders in your in your community, so mm-hmm. that you have a sounding board and people who are going through the same thing that you are. Um, yeah. I think that's really important to not be isolated. That was the word I was just gonna say. It's just don't be isolated. Yeah. And you know, you only need one. You don't need like ten good friends. Yeah. You just need one good friend, and so at that point, it's a numbers game. You know, yeah. maybe meet with a few worship leaders and some might click, some may not, uh, because you only need, you only need one that right. really you could like build community with and relationship with and feel known and also help them feel known. And you might yeah. even feel really, uh, fulfilled by helping them out in whatever they're 100%. doing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think, I think it's always tempting, even if we don't try, like, you know, you're a church can feel like such a bubble. And so even if a church is five minutes down the road, it's like, well, that's that church and we're our church and we're doing our thing. But it's like, yeah. we're all, we're all in this together. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, I think just finding, like you said, that one, one person who's in your area or out your area, whatever, who's going through the same thing as you to just remind you like, Hey, we're all, 
we're all going through the same thing. I would even say for worship leaders, sometimes we only like to magnetically kind of connect to people that are like us, you know, other band members, other worship leaders. But some of the relationships that have grown me the most are people who are not worship leaders at all. And in fact, maybe people who don't even know anything about music or what I'm doing. Sure. And so I say that in that be open to the idea that the person who might be the perfect person for that relationship might not, might surprise you. Yeah. Be open to maybe someone who's very, very different than you and yeah. uh, maybe not in the music world. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cause I think that, I think if, if that's not what they're currently doing or an interest of theirs or a hobby or whatever the case may be, yeah. it's almost easier for them to just see you as a person yeah. and not see you as the worship leader on stage. Yeah. And I totally. think we all need that. Totally. You know, it's funny. I'm actually glad you said that because I was thinking back to when I was on staff at a church and I always felt a little weird connecting. One of the, one of the things that kept me from going vulnerable with people at the church was that I was the guy on on stage on on staff and I, I never yeah. felt fully comfortable and what I like to do I remember I actually went to another church down the road like 10 miles down the road and I went to like one of their young adult ministries and got connected there and built a lot of relationships there and yeah. I felt like at that I could just be Matt you yeah. know I was not the guy on staff I was not the worship leader I was just attending a church yep. <laughs> building relationship and community with people and so yep. Yeah, be open to look outside of your world in a way. Yeah. I love that. Well, Lauren, how can people find you and follow you and stay in touch with you if they want to? Yeah, so, well, you can find North Point Worship uh, on any social media platform. Uh, Instagram is at North Point Worship. Um, our music's on anywhere, like any platform that you stream music, Spotify, um, yeah. Apple, Amazon, all that stuff. And then if you want to follow me and keep up with my craziness, I mostly post videos and pictures of my daughter. So I don't know if that's <laughs> yeah. of interest, yeah. um, but my Instagram is at Lauren Lee music. So I would awesome. love, I would love to be connected and, and keep awesome. up. Awesome. So thanks for your words of encouragement, Lauren. It was great to meet you. I appreciate you taking the time to uh, join us on loop live. Yes. Thanks for having me. Yep. See you soon. Bye.